The worsening income inequality in the United States has gotten a lot of uh, attention in the news media, and justifiably so. Uh, it, the, the problem of economic inequality uh, is, you know, is, is a central one. Um, our system of democracy, the political system, um, and the economic system of, of you know, relatively um, market-oriented um, distribution of resources, more so than other countries. There's a few that are that are even more market oriented than we are, but we are we allow the market to do more things than say the European governments typically do. Uh, anyway, all 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 of those decisions have been made on the basis that that's the best way to distribute well being to our citizenry, and and if we have a situation where the very top of our citizenry is doing really well, but everybody else is not. Well, then that's a that's a broken system, and it's it's um, it it's evidence that hey, the system isn't working the way it's supposed to. There isn't um, some you know God given reason to organize things this way. Uh, the, we've organized this things this way because we we have embraced the argument that this is the best way to make the most people the happiest. Um, anyway, if that's not happening, then we got a problem. All right, well, let's just get a, get a little bit of our, uh, get our minds around the problem a little bit. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to walk you through table 12.2 in the Frank Bernanke uh, Principles of Microeconomics text. And first, I want you to notice that we're going to make a comparison of income across, oh, three decades of time. We, it's actually pretty interesting it's interesting to go longer than that. I guess they didn't have room in this table. And um, notice what's going on here. $2,009, what they've done is converted all figures into $2,009. Um, and, and that enables us to examine changes in real income. So we're not looking at the effects of inflation. Uh, okay, with that said, uh, oh, the other thing to point out is one thing we do when we study income distributions, we we run this thought experiment where we line everybody in the country up and we organize them, we order them from the very poorest person, or you know, oftentimes these are um, by households, families, so it's households. Uh, you, you take the very poorest household and you put them first and you line up the next poorest, the next poorest, the, the next poorest, all the way up till the end of the line is the richest. And then we break up, we look at who's the per, the, how, which household is situated so that Exactly one fifth or one quintal, we call them. 20% 20, 20 of households are, are more poor than they are. That's the bottom 20%. That's the first quintal. And then we go again, we, we establish another marker at the household where 40% are poorer and, and 60 richer. And that's the second quintal and, and so on. The third quintal happens where 60% of households are, are poorer. Um, oh, actually, um, these are averages for quintals, but, but the quintals are, um, are, are created in the way I'm talking about. So this isn't the, the these figures are from the average of the bottom 20% uh, bottom quintal. Uh, and then anyway, the, the fourth quintal is the, the group of families that are richer than 60% of the population and poorer than the top 20, that group of households, and then finally the top 20. Then we, we break off um, the top 5%, just because in the U.S. economy, a lot of what's happening in terms of increasing income inequality is happening at the very top. Actually, there's a lot of work that's been done to show that really it's the top 1%, even the top half a percent of the population that's, that's accruing most of the, these big gains in the economy. But let, let's go through the numbers. Notice that for the bottom quintal, this is the poorest 20%. 20% of families. Uh, between 1980 and 2009, you know, there was some, there, well, between 80 and 90, that was a period of stagnation. Uh, the 90s were good, good for, for uh, poor families as well as for most other families, and, and, and they saw fairly substantial income gains. Remember, remember these are real gains, not, not, um, uh, not gains due to just inflation. But then, of course, 2009, somewhat in the middle of the Great Recession, and we saw uh, quite a lot of uh, income losses at um, most levels, but in particular, it, well, maybe we can just say all levels, but in particular at, uh, for, for the bottom 20%. Uh, the second quintal, notice 
things aren't a whole lot better, although there is some uh, real growth. There's, again, growth from 80 to uh, 2000, um, and, but, but then a, a, a loss going into um, 2009. And, and so we see some very, very modest growth um, between 80 and 2009, where we saw actually some loss of ground between those two points for the poorest group, but, but still not great gains for the poorest, um, the, the second poorest quintile, the second quintile. Uh, that's the lower middle class, I guess we could say. Uh, now, the, the middle class, the middle quintile, this is richer than 40% um, and poorer than 40% of the population. This middle quintile, we see some fairly vigorous gains going in going between 80 and 2,000, uh, but, but then some losses. Um, in percentage terms, not as big a loss as the other groups faced, but still... Um, a, a significant loss in, in real terms. Um, but still, the, the middle 20, this isn't the most spectacular generation in, in U.S. history, or especially recent U.S. history, but it's the, the middle quintile is doing better than the, the poorer two um, quintiles in terms of percentage gains. Eh, maybe, maybe it's a tie. I've got to get my calculator out. But um, the, the second to the highest quintile, the fourth quintile, we call that. Notice that there's some pretty vigorous gains um, from 80 to 2000, uh, a modest loss. In dollar terms, about the same loss as other groups faced, 3000, but uh, the other, the, the lower two quintiles. But remember, since their income is so much higher, that as a percentage loss is, is uh, considerably smaller. It's, it's actually closer to a $2,000 loss than $3,000 loss. Um, and then finally, the top 20, this is where most of the income gains have happened uh, in, in, real, in dollar terms and in um, percentage increase overall. Um, and, and so, you know, even with that recession, uh, the, the drop in income from 195 to 189, um, this group from 80 to 2009 has done considerably well, a 50% increase in income compared to uh, almost no change. Well, indeed, a shrinking in the bottom, very little change in the second quintile. Yeah, still pretty small change in the third quintile. Better, thing, things are better for the fourth quintile, but they're, they're much better still for the highest quintile. And if, we, and if we split that group up into the very rich, if, if your household is making 173000 a year, or was in 1980, that put them in the top, um, and, and those are, of course, in $2,009, but that put them in the top group of income earners. That group saw their income almost double over that period, um, and, and indeed more than double between 80 and 2000, and, and just, and yeah, they, that group lost a, a, a lot of income in the, going into the Great Recession, but um, they, they still ended up, uh, over, over that generation, quite a bit better off than everybody else. And, and indeed, in, they, they started better than everybody else. They're the richest top, richest 5%, but, but they also experienced the highest percentage gains in income by, by a fair margin.